In combinatorics, the twelvefold way is a name given to a systematic classification of twelve related enumerative problems concerning two finite sets which include the classical problems of counting permutations, combinations, multisets, and partitions either of a set or of a number. The idea of the classification is credited to Giancarlo Rota, and the name was suggested by Joel Spencer. Overview Let them be finite sets. Let them be the cardinality of the sets. Thus is and set, and is and set. The general problem we consider is the enumeration of equivalence classes of functions. The functions are subject to one of the three following restrictions. No condition. Each in may be sent by to any in, and each may occur multiple times. Is injective. Each value for in must be distinct from every other, and so each in may occur at most once in the image of. Is surjective. For each in there must be at least one in such that, thus each will occur at least once in the image of. A possible fourth condition of being bijective is not included, since it doesn't add any new problems. There are four different equivalence relations which may be defined on the set of functions from two. Equality. Equality up to a permutation of. Equality up to a permutation of. Equality up to permutations of in. Any of these equivalence relations produces a decomposition of the set of functions into equivalence classes. The three conditions on the functions and the four equivalence relations can be paired in three times four equals twelve ways. The twelve problems of counting equivalence classes of functions do not involve the same difficulties, and there is not one systematic method for solving them. Two of the problems are trivial. Five problems have an answer in terms of a multiplicative formula of n and x, and the remaining five problems have an answer in terms of combinatorial functions. The incorporation of classical enumeration problems into this setting is as follows. Counting n permutations of x is equivalent to counting injective functions n x. Counting n combinations of x is equivalent to counting injective functions n x up to permutations of n. Counting permutations of the set x is equivalent to counting injective functions n x when n equals x, and also to counting surjective functions n x when n equals x. Counting multisets of size n of elements in x is equivalent to counting all functions n x up to permutations of n. Counting partitions of the set n into x subsets is equivalent to counting all surjective functions n x up to permutations of x. Counting compositions of the number n into x parts is equivalent to counting all surjective functions n x up to permutations of n. Viewpoints the various problems in the twelvefold way may be considered from different points of view. Balls and boxes Traditionally many of the problems in the twelvefold way have been formulated in terms of placing balls in boxes instead of defining functions. The set n can be identified with a set of balls, and x with a set of boxes, then function f. Nx then describes a way to distribute the balls into the boxes, namely by putting each ball or into box f. Thus the property that a function ascribes a unique image to each value in its domain is reflected by the property that any ball can go into only one box, whereas any box can accommodate an arbitrary number of balls. Requiring in addition f to be injective means forbidding to put more than one ball in any one box, while requiring f to be surjective means insisting that every box contain at least one ball. Counting modulo permutations of n and or of x is reflected by calling the balls respectively the boxes indistinguishable. This is an imprecise formulation, intended to indicate that different configurations are not to be counted separately if one can be transformed into the other by some interchange of balls respectively of boxes. This is what the action by permutations of n and or of x formalizes. In fact the case of indistinguishable boxes is somewhat harder to visualize than that of indistinguishable balls, since a configuration is inevitably presented with some ordering of the boxes, permuting the boxes will then appear as a permutation of their contents. 
Sampling Another way to think of some of the cases is in terms of sampling, in statistics. Imagine a population of X items, of which we choose N. Two different schemes are normally described, known as, sampling with replacement, and, sampling without replacement. In the former case, once we've chosen an item, we put it back in the population, so that we might choose it again. The result is that each choice is independent of all the other choices, and the set of samples is technically referred to as independent identically distributed. In the latter case, however, once we've chosen an item, we put it aside so that we can't choose it again. This means that the act of choosing an item has an effect on all the following choices, so our choices are dependent one another. In the terminology below, the case of sampling with replacement is termed NEF, while the case of sampling without replacement is termed injective F. Each box indicates how many different sets of choices there are in a particular sampling scheme. The row labeled distinct means that the ordering matters. For example, if we have 10 items, of which we choose 2, then the choice is different from. On the other hand, the row labeled SN orders means that ordering doesn't matter. Choice and or equivalent. In terms of probability distributions, sampling with replacement where ordering matters is comparable to describing the joint distribution of n separate random variables each with an x-fold categorical distribution. The case where ordering doesn't matter, however, is comparable to describing a single multinomial distribution of n draws from an x-fold category, where only the number seen of each category matters. The case where ordering doesn't matter and sampling is without replacement is comparable to a single multivariate hypergeometric distribution. And the fourth possibility does not seem to have a correspondence. Note that in all the injective cases, the number of sets of choices is zero unless nx. From this perspective, the case labeled surjective F is somewhat strange. Essentially, we keep sampling with replacement until we've chosen each item at least once. Then, we count how many choices we've made, and if it's not equal to n, throw out the entire set and repeat. This is vaguely comparable to the coupon collector's problem, where the process involves collecting a set of x coupons until each coupon has been seen at least once. Note that in all surjective cases, the number of sets of choices is zero unless nx. Selection, labeling, grouping a function f. Nx can be considered from the perspective of x or of n. This leads to different views. The function f labels each element of n by an element of x. The function f selects an element of the set x for each element of n, a total of n choices. The function f groups the elements of n together that are mapped to the same element of x. These points of view are not equally suited to all cases. The labeling and selection points of view are not well compatible with permutation of the elements of x. Since this changes the labels or the selection, on the other hand the grouping point of view does not give complete information about the configuration unless the elements of x may be freely permuted. The labeling and selection points of view are more or less equivalent when n is not permuted, but when it is, the selection point of view is more suited. The selection can then be viewed as an unordered selection. A single choice of a set of n elements from x is made. Labeling and selection with or without repetition when viewing f as a labeling of the elements of n. The latter may be thought of as arranged in a sequence, and the labels as being successively assigned to them. A requirement that f be injective means that no label can be used a second time. The result is a sequence of labels without repetition. In the absence of such a requirement, the terminology, sequence with repetition is used, meaning that labels may be used more than once. For an unordered selection the same kind of distinction applies. If f must be injective, then the selection must involve n distinct elements of x, so it is a subset of x of size n, also called an n combination. Without the requirement, a same element of x may occur multiple times in the selection, and the result is a multi-set of size n of elements from x. 
also called an N-multi-combination or N-combination with repetition. In these cases the requirement of a surjective F means that every label is to be used at least once, respectively that every element of X be included in the selection at least once. Such a requirement is less natural to handle mathematically, and indeed the former case is more easily viewed first as a grouping of elements of N, with an additional labeling of the groups by the elements of X. Partitions of sets and numbers when viewing F as a grouping of the elements of N, requiring F to be surjective means the number of groups must be exactly X. Without this requirement the number of groups can be at most X. The requirement of injective F means each element of N must be a group in itself, which leaves at most one valid grouping and therefore gives a rather uninteresting counting problem. When in addition one identifies under permutations of N, this amounts to forgetting the groups themselves but retaining only their sizes. These sizes moreover do not come in any definite order. While the same size may occur more than once, one may choose to arrange them into a weakly decreasing list of numbers, whose sum is the number n. This gives the combinatorial notion of a partition of the number n, into exactly x or at most x parts.